Hello everybody, hope you're all doing wonderful today. This is Warrior Dan back with an all new What is the Point of video. Today we'll be looking at a game that's been getting a lot of attention lately in the gaming press. I am of course speaking about GoldenEye Source. GoldenEye Source is a total conversion mod, a standalone mod, developed using the Source engine. The game development engine created and owned by Valve, the creators and owners of Steam. Development of GoldenEye Source can be traced back as far as 2005. The game has gone through a number of incarnations over the years, with major updates being released inconsistently throughout the years. However, following the unanticipated success of version 5.0, their latest build, the team has gone on record promising to be more receptive to community feedback and more consistent in regards to the release of future game updates. All of this bringing us to where we are today. Now I have to say, first and foremost, I'm a huge fan of the old classic Bond games from the 90s and early 2000s. Some of my favorite Bond games being the original GoldenEye for the Nintendo 64, as well as Agent Under Fire for the PlayStation 2, and finally Nightfire for the Nintendo GameCube. However, ever since then, I've never really had the opportunity to sit down and play a proper Bond game, because over the course of the mid-2000s, the Bond game series slowly began to die off, releasing games that frankly became worse and worse over time, until January 2013, when Activision finally made the decision to let the video game rights to Bond expire, and return back to the original copyright holders. Since then, no major gaming publisher has made a move to buy back the rights to Bond and release new additions to the franchise, which brings us back to GoldenEye's source. The lack of AAA competition, as far as Bond is concerned, since the mid-2000s, more or less opened the field for the modding community to bring games like GoldenEye Source into the fold, offering Bond fans an authentic James Bond experience, one that they cannot currently find elsewhere in the mainstream gaming market. GoldenEye Source currently offers 10 multiplayer game modes, 25 playable maps, and an array of playable characters. So although there is no traditional single player campaign mode like there was in the original GoldenEye game back in 1997, you will not be lacking for content. The game has gotten a lot of support from the community. Even some commercial game server hosting companies, including NFO servers, have offered their support, providing GoldenEye Source free public servers for players to play on any time. This is not the first mod I've seen in recent years that's gotten a lot of community support from the player base, but it's definitely the first one in years in my opinion that's really taken over the gaming media by a storm. And I think all of that is great. It's great to see a community come together and embrace a game made purely for the spirit of pure love. Of love of the genre and love of a specific game that inspired a whole genre of games following it. But before I get too ahead of myself, let's get into the gameplay. The first thing you'll probably notice when playing GoldenEye Source for the first time is the very obvious homages to the old classic 90s shooter formula of gameplay, made popular by games such as GoldenEye, Doom, Quake, etc. Everything from the on-screen health meter to the difficult to control aiming system, which by the way is clearly designed to reflect the difficult analog stick controls from the original GoldenEye game on the N64. In an age like today, filled with ultra-accurate mouse movement detection, this descent back in time back to an era when game controls were not so defined really is a nice throwback for us older gamers. I'm old enough personally to remember playing GoldenEye on the N64 as well as a whole bunch of games from that time frame. I remember the N64, I remember the PlayStation 1, hell I remember when the Sega Saturn was still fading out of popularity. The 90s was a good time for suitors. You had some of the best suitors come out into the market, games I've already mentioned like GoldenEye, Quake, Doom, so on and so forth. It was the golden age I think in many ways for the genre, and I can't think of a better example than the original GoldenEye game, a game that clearly inspired this game now. Another interesting bit in regards to the gameplay is the abundance of health. Unlike most other games, <coughs> Call of Duty, <coughs> headshots aren't insta-kills, and body shots don't do much damage. This is kind of cool in a way. You can take a few critical hits to the head without dying, a single headshot is not going to kill you. That doesn't mean you can go all Rambo and run into a room full of 5 enemies and not expect to be killed, but at least you don't have to worry about certain types of death, like you do nowadays in current games. If you do start soaking up a lot of damage, you can find some health packs scattered across levels. Now in my opinion, the placement for health packs in the maps is just frankly completely bonkers. Everything from weapons to health packs is scattered across the map with seemingly little rhyme or reason to it. Now, for weapons, I just want to say this. This is fine. This encourages players to pick up as many weapons as they like and swap between them as needed. But for health, I do think there needs to be a little bit more effort put into health placement so players can more easily find health if needed. Keep in mind, these are large maps, and we'll get into talking about map design in a minute, but when you're running around at low health, it's often faster just to run at an enemy, die, and respawn, than it is to find a health pack somewhere in the level, and restore your health that way. 
And to me, if the only way to be able to get back to full health is to die, then that shows a lack of proper balancing in regards to health placement, and I think that can and should be fixed in a future update. Now, regarding the game's multiplayer maps, which is where you'll be spending most of your time. Each of the 25 maps currently available in the game are fun and different from one another, each one having their own unique layout, advantages, and disadvantages. One of my personal favorites among the new maps is the Egyptian map. I did showcase it in my recent Let's Play video where I covered GoldenEye Source, and I think it's a lot of fun, and I think many of the maps in this game are. Speaking as someone who's had a lot of experience playing games made with the Source engine, the graphics and unique visual styling of the maps is beautiful, and pushes the very outdated Source engine to its limits. Again, keep in mind that the Source engine was created in the mid to late 90s, I believe, and has continuously been updated ever since. So we're working on very old tech, so the fact that they're able to push it to its utmost to make it look like a current gen console game is fantastic. The abundance of many classic Bond multiplayer game modes like Capture the Flag, Death Mats, You Only Live Twice, The Living Daylights, etc. It's all a credit to the game. I respect its commitment to keeping the original style and flavor of the original GoldenEye game. However, where the game really signs, in my opinion, is in some of its new game modes. Including, for example, Gun Trade, where every time you kill someone, you steal their weapon, and that is the weapon that you're stuck with. Now, I've seen this kind of game mode in other games, such as Team Fortress 2 for one. It's not completely exclusive to GoldenEye Source, but they added a few neat tricks to the mode that make it feel very fun and unique, in its own way. Now, the final really good thing I wanted to mention, before we get into the negatives, is the soundtrack for this game. The music composition here is flawless, in my opinion. You instantly feel like you're in an actual Bond game. And to me, that's one of the most important keys. In all the Bond games I've played, like the actual published ones by Electronic Arts and so on, the music was fantastic. It really made you feel like you were a spy in a James Bond world. Like whether I was playing as James Bond, Oddjob, Jaws, any of the villains or heroes, you really felt immersed in the game and you, you felt so in the moment. And the music was a big part of that, so I'm happy to see music once again play a really big role in the game. And I think in a, in a way, this is what separates Bond from other suitors like Call of Duty or Battlefield, Battlefront, any of the battle games to be honest. Okay, now getting into the less than positive bits. One of the major issues with the game is when you try the offline mode, where you set up your own custom game. Now, the amount of customization available here, like picking out everything you want in a game, ranging from the game mode, the weapon set, gameplay modifiers, the amount of bots, bot difficulty, it's all fantastic. However, the AI in this game, the bot AI, is just completely bonkers. There are so, so many moments in the game where I just have to shake my head and sigh because the AI is being incredibly stupid or, in some cases, actually broken. Just take a look at this. For the love of God, please take a look at this. I can't tell you how many times something like this, funny as it is, has happened to me in-game. And I've only put in maybe 10 or 12 hours into the game max. Now I get it, there is a small group of developers working on this game, of volunteer developers, mind you. Bugs are going to pop up, it happens, I'm okay with it. The GoldenEye Source team has said in forums that they do plan to update the game in the near future with bug fixes and exploit fixes, and that's great, but it also leads into the second problem here. Hackers are still fairly common in online servers. I've played maybe 9 or 10 matches online, and in I'd say about half of them I've encountered people who I'm pretty sure were hacking. And I'm not one to throw around that accusation lightly, I think I've legitimately run into some hackers. And I'm not the only one having these issues. I've done some reading on the official GoldenEye Source forums, and many other users have reported similar findings. Now, issues like hacking and aimbotting can be addressed in future updates, and I hope that is the case. I'm not going to hold it against the game too much. But it is hard to have fun if you're consistently 
running into hackers and aimbotters. It does detract from the overall experience. Now that said, I love a lot of the things that GoldenEye Source has to offer. I think it's done an amazing job of staying loyal to the original franchise while still adding in a new flavor to the game. It brings back everything we loved from the old Bond games and adds a new formula to it. It, it adds new content to it. It adds a whole new vibe, a whole new community. And I think that's nothing sort of fantastic. Now I think it's safe to say when a new update comes out, I'm going to be there at the keyboard ready to jump in and play the moment they launch it. I really want to have fun with this game, but with the two core issues of hacking as well as incompetent AI, it's hard to fully embrace either the online mode or the offline modes, given the core issues with both. My final score for GoldenEye Source is an 8 out of 10. It's a very, very strong game. It is one of the best games I've seen all year, almost on par with some of the AAA games I've seen this year. If it was a Steam game out there for 15, 20 bucks, I would buy it. I put it at the same level that I would CSGO, that kind of thing. Like it's a game that for me, I wouldn't play all the time, but if I got tired of playing Overwatch and TF2, this is a game I jump right into as like a side thing. That's kind of where I rank it. Like I said, there are some gameplay issues, but I still highly recommend you go over to the official GoldenEye Source website and download the game now, see how you like it. I'm very curious to hear your thoughts. This has been Warrior Dan, and you have hopefully enjoyed another episode of What is the Point of? If you like this video, please do hit that like button right there underneath the video screen. It's in the bottom right hand corner. I hope you find it. I hope you click it and tell me in the comments below. What do you think of this longer format? Good? Not your style? I'm curious to hear your opinion. So go down there, start typing. I'll know if you don't. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.